Hi there, everyone. I have a super interesting and unique testing video for you today because we're going to be looking at this. This is the Foxia Donut 5145 toroidal propeller, and it's the first mass produced toroidal propeller for FPV. For those of you that might not be aware, toroidal props were invented by a research group at MIT in 2017, and they promise to offer much lower noise and higher efficiency than the typical propellers that we use for a whole bunch of applications, including marine propellers and also propellers for our drones as well. In this video, I'm gonna be testing this toroidal propeller on my thrust test stand. We're gonna be looking at the thrust, the power, the responsiveness, the efficiency, and the noise profile of this propeller to see how it compares against one of the best propellers that I've tested so far, this Nazgul F5 prop. And if it can match or even exceed this Nazgul F5 prop in some respects, then these toroidal propellers might be the very best propellers that you can buy for FPV today. It's a lot to cover in one video. I'm not gonna waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. So what makes a toroidal prop so special? Well, as any propeller spins, it creates an area of high pressure below the blade and an area of low air pressure above the blade. And it's that difference in pressure that provides the thrust that the prop is able to generate. As we move towards the tip of a traditional propeller, there's a big difference between the pressure underneath and above the blade. And the air wants to rush from the high pressure underneath the blade to the low pressure above it. And as that air rushes around the tip of the propeller, it creates a strong tip vortex, like a mini tornado at the tip of the propeller. And that vortex creates a lot of noise, and it also contributes to quite a bit of the drag that the propeller experiences as it's spinning. So it also damages the efficiency of the propeller. With a toroidal prop, as we move out to the tip, there isn't a sharp tip of the propeller blade anymore. Because the toroidal prop kind of blends one blade into the other, it spreads out the area over which that high and low pressure can equalize. You don't get such a strong tip vortex, and therefore the toroidal prop promises less noise and also less loss due to the tip vortex, and so better efficiency as well. So the theory sounds really, really good but we're gonna to have to test it out in practice on the thrust test stand. Now it's time to get into some results. I subjected the Nazgul F5 and the Foxia Donut 5145 to a battery of different tests, including a throttle ramp from zero to 100% throttle to look at the thrust and efficiency of the prop, an acceleration test to see how responsive the prop is, and a brand new test, a sound pressure level test, where I looked at the amount of noise each prop produced over a range of different throttle positions. All of these tests were done on my standard test motor for props, which is the Zing 2 2207 1855 KV. Before we dive into the results, let me know if you're enjoying the video with a like, a subscribe, and maybe a comment down below. I love reading your comments and I really appreciate the feedback. Now on with the results. All right, now it's time to take a look at some data. And we're gonna start with the thrust versus RPM chart. This shows how much thrust a prop is able to produce across a range of motor RPM. And what we can see here is that the iFlight Nazgul F5 prop is a higher pitch prop than the Foxia Donut 5145. It produces more thrust at a given RPM, and that's gonna make it better for achieving a higher top speed, but potentially a little bit more difficult to control, especially low in the throttle. The Foxia Donut 5145, being a lighter pitch prop, is gonna give you more low throttle control, but it's not gonna have so much top end. The next chart we're gonna look at is the thrust versus power chart. And this shows how much thrust the prop is able to produce for the amount of mechanical power that it's consuming from the motor. And what we can see here is that there's a big difference in efficiency between the Nazgul F5 and the Donut 5145. The iFlight Nazgul F5 consumes pretty much exactly the same amount of power as the Foxia Donut at full throttle, but it produces significantly more thrust, and that means it's a more efficient prop. And that's surprising because one of the touted benefits of toroidal props is an improvement in efficiency. We're not seeing that here with this design. The traditional Nazgul F5 prop is significantly more efficient. The responsiveness of a prop is really important for keeping a quad stable in the air. And I tested the responsiveness of the Nazgul F5 and the Donut 5145 and found them to be similarly responsive. So there's no measurable difference between these two props in terms of their responsiveness. It's not only responsiveness that determines how smooth and stable the footage from your quad will be. The amount of vibration that's generated by the prop is also really important for that. 
And this vibration versus thrust chart shows you how much vibration the props produce at certain thrust levels. What we can see is that the Foxeer Donut 5145 produces quite a bit more vibration than the Nazgul F5, particularly at high throttle levels. And there is always a risk with having a, a lot of vibration coming from the prop that some of that will make it through into your HD camera footage or FPV feed, particularly at those higher throttle positions where the prop is generating more vibration. The iFlight Nazgul F5 has a much lower vibration level particularly at those higher throttle levels. And so it's likely to give you smoother footage with less vibration and less jello as a result. The final graph I wanna show you is the sound pressure level produced by each of these props at a range of different thrust values. And one of the advantages of toroidal props is supposed to be that they're significantly quieter than traditional props. And that's not what I found with my testing. In my testing, the Donut 5145, the toroidal prop, was slightly louder than the Nazgul F5, the traditional prop, at every thrust level. And so I wasn't able to reproduce the MIT result of lower noise for the toroidal prop. But of course, it's not just the sound pressure level, it's also the character of the sound, how noticeable or annoying the sound is. So let's listen to the toroidal prop versus the traditional prop back to back and see which you think is the more noticeable or annoying sound. So that brings us to the end of the video and as always the conclusions. And although I love how these props look and I love what they represent in terms of technology innovation and I love that Foxeer decided to actually go ahead, take the plunge and make a mass produced toroidal prop. Despite all of that, I still don't think I'm going to be running these props day to day on my drones. They just don't quite yet have the performance of a well optimized traditional prop. They produce less thrust, they make more noise, and they're less efficient. And for those reasons, I can't really see myself switching to them just yet. I'm really hopeful that there is something to this technology and that in the future there will be a V2 and a V3 of the Donut 5145 and the efficiency will improve and the sound level will come down. And if that happens, you can bet I'm going to be retesting them. And the moment they look to be equal to or better than a traditional prop in any of those areas, I'm going to be recommending that some of us start flying them. But until that day, I think it's just fantastic that we have people in the hobby who are interested enough to make stuff like this, to try it out, and I'm really excited to have tested it. If you like this type of test work, you like the videos that I produce, and you want to support the channel, you want to help me make more videos like this, then please consider joining my Patreon. You can join from just a few dollars a month. You'll get access to a special area of my Discord server. You'll get sneak peeks of the projects that I'm working on, and you'll get to know about new AOS products before anyone else. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying, and I'll see you in the next one.